Today we are going to be making the Weave It Tote. So this is a super fun bag, an essential bag. Everyone needs a tote bag in their kind of repertoire, in their wardrobe. Um, so this would make a great gift as well. It's got these woven side panels, as you can see, and it doesn't use that much interfacing if you're making it out of vinyl or faux leather or leatherette. If you're making it out of a cotton or a canvas, I do recommend you interface it just because it's going to give it a bit more structure. Um, and if you want it even a little bit more structured as well, you could use waterproof canvas on the inside for the lining. So here it is from the top view. On the inside, we can put an optional magnetic snap on the top. I haven't on this one, as you can see. On the inside, it's quite hard to show you, but there are two slip pockets. So you've got a large slip pocket and that can fit in there a ring binder or a big large uh, letter or A4 size notebook. You could put your patterns in there. So it makes a really cool um project bag to take along with you and then with that in mind as well we've also got two slip pockets in the top so you can pop your little bits and pieces you can put your scissors your pins your tape measure if you're making it as a as a project bag and then you could pop your pattern in there or you could put your notebook in there your shopping well it's a tote bag so we all know it's super useful super um so many different uses that you can use this for so you're going to need to print out your pattern pieces and then you're going to need to cut them all out exactly as it tells you in the instructions. There's also an optional magnetic snap and then there you're going to need four rivets as well. Now you could um, change this and not use the rivets, although I recommend you do because A, it adds a bit more of a professional look and it just gives a bit more structure and a bit more strength and it's going to make it a bit easier when we come to that bit as well. Okay, then we're going to need all of our straps. So we're going to need to cut out quite a few straps for this. We're going to need, so we're working primarily with pattern piece four and pattern piece five. And you're going to need to cut out 22 of the shorter woven pieces and six of the longer woven pieces or weaving pieces, not to be confused with woven fabric. Okay, so we're gonna cut out all these pieces. You want to make a note of how you're doing your bag. So on the sample that I showed you just now, as you can see, I've used two different colors. So when I'm talking about the main color, I'm talking about this navy that I've used on the front and the back and these strips here, okay? And then the contrast, I am using that for my, so I'm doing the same method basically in the one that we're gonna be doing today. So the contrast is the straps and then uh, these other pieces for the woven pieces going down. And you want to bear that in mind when we come to various parts. If you're going to go a little bit off piece and use different colors for this side panel, totally fine. Just bear in mind that you're gonna to want to have a different number of those pieces. So you're gonna to need to work that out, okay? So for the bag that I'm going to do today, I'm using this one as my main color and then this kind of aubergine as my contrasting color. Okay, so we're gonna start with our woven pieces, what I'm going to call the woven pieces. So we want to, on the back of each one, we want to mark a line in the middle along the long length. Okay, so mark a line with a pen and then we're going to put on that double-sided tape, okay? Just like I've done there. And what we want to do is we want to fold that strip so that it lies with the edge on the middle of that double-sided tape on that line that we drew before. Then we're gonna fold the other one to meet it. And that is just like how you do many, many straps. Often you'll make a strap this way and then you'll fold it in half again and then that will be the finished strap. Okay, we're not going to fold it in half again. We're just going to do it like that. Then we are going to top stitch along each edge. Now I'm using a binding foot for this. I haven't threaded up my needle, so let me just go ahead and do that. 
I'm using a binding foot for this because it means that you can get really nice and close and get a really lovely top stitch. And like always, we're going to hold the thread to start with. I'm going to do a four stitch length on this and make sure my needle is right the way over. You can pop clips in to keep that so that it's stuck at the back as well. Um, I'm not going to because I'm going to sew this straight away. So I'm holding the thread to start with. Makes that funny noise when it starts. Go back a couple of stitches. Now, normally you would worry about starting from the other end. Normally, if you're making a strap you, that doesn't have interfacing, these pieces do not have interfacing if they're vinyl or faux leather, we would start from the top end each time. Because uh, of how we're doing this, how we're weaving it in and we're going to line it up and straighten it up in a minute, we don't need to worry too much about that. So I'm happy to turn it around and start sewing from this end. If you um, don't sew from the same end and you're doing it as a strap, you could come into issues, it could bend and warp the faux leather. Okay, so I've done my one strap and now I'm going to go ahead and do another one. I'm going to do one in the contrasting colour and we're going to keep going, we're going to go through and we're going to complete those same steps making those straps for all 22 of the short woven straps and we're also going to do it for the six long straps. Okay, so now we've got 12 in our main fabric and 10 in our contrasting fabric of the short straps, okay? And we've got four in our contrasting fabric for the long straps and we've got two in our main fabric for the long straps as well. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to weave it all together, okay? So we want to take our pattern piece two, which is our dark lining. Now it says dark lining, you don't have to use dark fabric for it. If you're using light fa fabric or cork or something like that, then use something that is uh, similar to your fabric. So I'm using dark because obviously black, it will fade in. If by any chance anything is seen, you won't see it kind of thing. Um, but obviously if you're using a light fabric, then you can like a white or a cream, then I recommend you use this base is a, a white or a cream as well because you don't want it showing through the lining or anything like that. Okay, I'm just going to push those over to one side a minute. We want to take our long pattern piece too our side panel base in the dark lining. Okay, and we want to find the middles of both, or all edges, I should say. Grab my chalk. might be difficult for you to see on the black but I've got the four marks I've got half on these two sides and then I've got half on these two sides okay then we're going to place our middle strap uh, along the middle our long long strap so we want to take one of our main fabric and two of our contrasting fabrics, okay? Because this is gonna give the illusion that the straps are continuing on, okay? And we want to place them in the center. So we've got those marks, so we can use those to go by and place the other two next to them, butted up as close as we can get them. Okay, then you want to take 
your first strip and that is going to be in your main fabric and we're going to place it so that it goes underneath the middle strip and over the other two strips okay like this you see that then we're going to take I'm going to place it in a bit. There's excess on this pattern piece too that we're going to cut off a bit later, okay? So that's why it's looking quite big at the moment. Then we're going to take our next colour and we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to go lift that long strip up, push it underneath, like so, holding on to that bottom short strip. And that middle there, we can lift that one up and put it underneath. Okay, that makes sense. And then we're going to go along continuing to weave these strips in, alternating as we go. Then this is a little bit fiddly. We're going to make sure that our middle strap, strip, not strap, our middle strip is in the middle of that black piece and we're going to clip it. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, we just can eyeball it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to push up each of those long strips so that they're really butted up against it as close as they can be. We don't really want to see, even though it's a dark fabric, we don't really want to be able to see it underneath. You want to also make sure that the pieces aren't overlapping because you don't want these any of these pieces to overlap. They are meant to be flush, not overlapped. That's important because as we go through, there are going to be a few more layers and we don't want to add to it, make it tricky to sew. Okay, so I'm just pushing and manoeuvring, manipulating all those pieces so that they sit really nicely. Then we want to make do the same with these outside pieces. So we're going to make sure that there's enough room, same room at the top and the bottom. Again, eyeballing it is totally fine. And we're going to put clips in all the way around. This is the kind of fiddly bit that does take a little bit of time. But once we've done these side panels, the rest comes together quite quickly. So as I'm going along, I'm squishing the two together to try and make it as flush as possible. There I pick it up, so that they're right butted up as close as can be. Okay, so that panel is done. I'm going to complete that on the other panel before we baste the two. So there we go, we've got the second one done. So we're going to baste one centimetre from the edge all the way around on both of those panels. Make sure that that's still in the middle. And can you see this has just fallen short a bit, so I'm just going to pull that into line, keep making sure it's all lined up and really snug. I don't know if you can see but I'm getting close to this strip now but it's okay because I'm not on it as long as I don't sew through it it's okay it's just that it's shifted a little bit it will go back into sync in a little bit <clears throat> as long as you keep sewing so that they're all nestled up then we're going to be all right I'm 
that's the middle strap that I've come to, that middle, that shorter strap. And that is in the middle of the, or the strip is exactly in the middle of the pattern piece too. I'll just check that as I'm going. Ooh. Okay, do the second one. Okay, so we've got our two side panels. Now we're going to jump across and we're going to do our straps for the handles, our long handles. And there isn't a pattern piece for these just because they were uh, a basic rectangle and they're a bit longer. So we need two in our, well, obviously you can choose how you're gonna do it. I want my handles to match the strap, oh, the, the sides, sorry. I want my handles or my straps to match that side weave so that it looks like it is in line. It looks like that same continuous strip, but obviously you do you, you can do however you want. So we've got our main straps in our main fabric. I'm gonna call it the main fabric, the outer fabric contrasting fabric and then we've got two in our lining now obviously you can do this in the normal way that you make a strap where you fold it in half fold it in fold it in fold it over there is a video on my youtube on how to do that if you want a quick reference for that um, but we're going to do it a little bit differently today so on the back of the of what you're using for your outer fabric you want to mark right the way down the middle uh, with pen. You can use any pen, doesn't have to be friction pen, just like you did on the woven short and long pieces. Okay, then we're going to fold it over and we're going to take, I'm just going to take one of these out of the way, um, we're going to take our lining piece and we're going to place it right sides together all the way along and we're going to clip that in place. Then we're gonna sew half an inch along this edge, okay? It needs to be half an inch because of how we're doing this technique. So you might need to move your needle over to match that or put a piece of tape on your machine or however uh, you find it useful to check. Uh, we definitely don't want a six thread. We're gonna go for a three because I'm doing a mixture of cotton and rhino. I don't want to go down to a two and a half. It feels kind of weird because it's a, it's a big seam allowance. So then, send along that edge, we're going to open it up all the way along so that we've got both wrong sides facing. Okay, so there's our right side and there's our wrong side. Then we're gonna grab a double-sided tape and we're going to put a double-sided tape down the middle of that line that we drew earlier. And then we're gonna fold that long edge to meet that line. And we're gonna clip it along as we go. So clipped all the way along that long edge. Then what we want to do is we want to fold the lining so that it meets this edge here, okay? That we sewed before. So we fold that like that. And then because it's lining, we're going to press that. Now obviously we want to make sure that we don't, we want to make sure that we don't catch that vinyl edge. We do not want to have the iron anywhere near that. And then, as you may have guessed, you can fold over the vinyl onto the top and you can clip that in place. And that should give you a nice even strap with it folded along both edges. Then we're going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from each edge. Okay. 
Okay, so there is our strap. And then we're going to complete that for the other one. We've got our two straps. So we're going to pop those to one side and then we're going to continue on and we're going to do our lining pockets. So we're going to take our pattern piece six and our pattern piece seven. Okay, so those are our two pockets. And what we want to do is start with pattern piece six. We want to take it, open it up, and we're going to fold it right sides together. And we're going to sew along that bottom edge. Okay. And we're going to sew with a one centimeter seam allowance as well. Okay. And I'm going to repeat that with pattern piece six. So now we've got those two pieces. Let's move this out of the way a second. And we're going to turn them, I'm going to snip the threads off. Oh, got a bit of tape stuck on there. We're going to turn them the right way out. I'm just going to reach through and turn the tube the right way out. Now, if you've got a directional print like I have, you're going to have an obvious front and an obvious back. So you're going to make sure that you bear that in mind. I'm going to grab the iron and I'm going to press those flat. So one way to get a really nice crisp edge is to kind of, as you do it, you can kind of roll that seam and it will just want to fold in a little bit better. And then we're going to top stitch along those two edges. So like I say, if you've got a directional print like I have, you want to make sure that you've got that at the top and you've got your seam at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to top stitch along the top edge and the top edge of that one as well. Okay, so we've got our two pockets. Now we're going to pin them and stitch them into place on the lining panel. So I'm just going to grab my lining piece, pattern piece one. And I'm actually going to do that in a black because then the pocket pieces will show up a bit more on it when it's inside the bag. And we want to do our shorter one first. Of course, you could do it differently if you want to. If you want to have the smaller pockets inside the bigger pocket, you can move the bigger pocket up. I want to have this so that I can fit a notebook or um, paper, etc. So I'm going to uh, keep it as it is on the pattern. And we want to measure down so that it is eight centimeters from the top. Then we want to find the middle, okay, because we're going to make this into two pockets, we want to do a line down the middle. So I'm going to fold it in half, make a crease at the top because we're going to need that for the magnetic snap in a little bit. And make a crease there, hopefully that will show up. And I'm going to grab my friction pen. Yeah, I can see that. Brilliant. And I'm going to make a chalk. Where did I put my chalk? I'm going to make a chalk line at the top of the halfway. Like I say, we're going to need that in a little bit. And I'm going to sew all the way along that bottom edge, top stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge. And I'm going to stitch along that middle edge as well with a two and a half stitch length. Then we're going to take our other pocket, our bigger inside pocket, 
We'll place that over the top and that is going to be 13 centimeters from this top edge. Well, that's handy. That fits perfectly on the edge of that line of the uh, fabric design of the print. That makes me happy when things like that happen. <laughs> it's the little things. Because I'm not using um, feasible fleece or foam, um, I do recommend that you interface all your lining because um, it helps to give it more structure. I haven't interfaced all the vinyl pieces though. Okay, so I've pinned that in place and I'm gonna stitch along that bottom edge an eighth of an inch from the edge. Okay, then rather than casting off, I'm just gonna turn the needle, turn the work with the needle down and I'm gonna baste, I'm gonna switch my stitch length up to a six and I'm gonna baste along that long edge so that I keep both the pocket pieces nice and contained for later on. Then I'm gonna pick up on that other edge and baste those as well. Okay, so I've basted along those two edges now as well so that pocket isn't going anywhere. So we've got our two smaller pockets at the top and we've got our bigger pocket. Take the pins out. Okay, then we're gonna move across to sewing up the lining. Actually, one thing that I'm gonna do before that, before I forget, do not wanna forget, we need to even up our woven panels, okay? So you may remember me saying that these are gonna be a bit bigger than what we need. So you wanna take your pattern piece three and we're gonna line it up. So I'm gonna fold it in half. It's already cut on the fold. So we've got our half line naturally there. I fold it in half so I can see the middle and I can line up that middle strap with that crease line. Okay, does that make sense? Then we wanna line up this edge with the middle of this piece as well. So let's get that nice and even. Squish those end strips in. And then open it up and then what we're going to do is we're going to draw around the outside and we're going to snip off that excess. Trusty silver pen, it's not going to be seen so we can use a silver pen. Double, double, double check. Even as we can make it. And a silver pen is brilliant on vinyl leatherette. Hopefully you'll be able to see, especially if you're using dark colours, because it shows up really nicely. Or a white pen is good as well. Ooh. Can't draw a straight line today, what's up with me? And I'm gonna do that so that I know that that's where we finished. Can you see, even from there you can see, can't you? That that's really nice and clear. Do the same on this end. That's why we baste one centimetre from that edge, because then when you're doing this with any luck, you won't actually cut off your stitching. Now I can see that it's gonna cut off a little bit of my top stitching. So I'm just gonna be careful how I cut that. On this edge, it's gonna cut off. Okay. In fact, my pen line is right on my stitching, so it should be all right if I just go to one side. Grab my scissors. <coughs> and we're gonna just snip that off. Okay, there we go. So that panel is nicely prepped. Do the same on the other one. So then we're gonna make up our lining. So we've got our two pattern piece ones. One has got our pockets in it. 
And then we've got our two pattern piece three, which is our side panels, which is cut out of the lining. Mine's attached itself to itself. Never mind. Oh, I don't know what's happened there. That'll be fine. Okay, so we're going to sew it all together. Now on your pattern piece one, which I haven't done yet, we need to mark on, there's some notches at the bottom. Okay, there. I'm going to fold that at the mark, at the mark, the notch line. I could use a notch cutter, which I've forgotten to do, so I'm just going to do it like that. And I'm going to go from the top edge and I'm going to mark where that notch lies. And I'm going to grab some chalk. And on the other side as well. And I'm going to do it on my other piece. Okay, then we're going to go grab our long sides. And this is the lining piece, pattern piece one without the pockets. And I'm going to place sides, right sides together, making sure that my print is facing the right way. It wasn't then. <laughs> um, the print, the top is up here. Okay. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a bit short. It actually finishes where those notch marks are that I just put on. I'm going to pin that in place and we're going to sew along those two edges but really important we're going to stop one centimeter from the edge on both sides. Okay, take the pins out and we're going to grab our other lining with the pockets and we're going to do the same with those side panels. It's just that it's now attached to the other side of the lining. And we're going to pin along those long edges and sew like we did before. Take the pins out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to match up that bottom to edge. So we're going to match up the two pattern piece ones and we're going to sew along that long edge. But we're going to leave a gap of around four or five inches in the middle. Okay, now we're going to box the bottom. So the top of the bag is here. This is the bottom of that seam that we've just sewn with our opening, the turning. Don't know that I've left enough, but I can always unpick it if I need to. Right, I'm going to pinch the corners. So the corners look like that. If I pulled them out. Okay, I'm going to turn it on its side, open it up and it naturally will want to go in that position. Does that make sense? I'll do that again. So it was like that. Lift up that corner, see it's already folding. Open it up and we're going to sew along that edge. And I'm going to open up that seam, that bottom seam as well, to help it to lie flat and pin in place. The other thing that's going to help at this stage is to snip into the um, where you've stopped your stitches. You want to make a little snip about half a centimetre in, or a few eighths of an inch. That is going to help it to lie flatter. So this bit is going to help the fabric to move better. And we 
cutting into the stitch, not into the stitches, but where the stitches finish on the pattern piece one, not on the side panel. You don't need to do that. Open it up, lift up that corner again, that side, and it naturally wants to go in that position. Open up that bottom seam, give it a bit of a finger press and pin in place. Then we're going to sew with a one centimetre seam allowance along those two corners. Okay, take those pins out. And there we have it. Now we can cut off these corners if we want to, to give it a bit more space inside for getting those corners nice when we put it in the outer bag. That one's folded, so that's okay. That's kind of done it automatically. Right, then we are going to move on to making up the outer part of the bag. So we're going to do the same as what we did just now for the lining, but we're gonna do it with our outer pieces. So we're gonna take our uh, pattern piece one, just one of those at the moment, and we're gonna take one of our woven edges, our woven sides, and we're gonna do the same as we did before, and we wanna mark on again. on my other piece as well while I'm at it. Okay, so we're doing the same, like I say, as we did before, right sides together. Clip that in place this time. Now, when you come to sew this, I'm gonna sew it in the same way as we did before. You want to just check as you go that you're not catching the edges of that woven panel. So you want to make sure that we're not catching this in with our seam, okay? So you want to make sure that those are really nicely pushed in as you go. You can kind of feel underneath and squish them over. Even if you squish them over too far, um, that's totally fine because they'll even out, okay? Do not want to catch those in because it will change the look of it, okay? Not the end of the world if you do, but um, I just, ideally not want to catch them. So I'm pushing and making sure that the edges of those strips are well away from my needle. Even if they're in slightly the wrong place, at least they're not getting caught underneath. And don't forget we're stopping one centimetre from the bottom edge. So I'm going to get my little tool. Okay, so that's nicely sewn. Just double check not caught anything, no I haven't, brilliant, brilliant. And I'm gonna get my other panel and we're gonna repeat that for the other side. Now we're going to grab our other pattern piece one. I'm going to place that right sides down. Where have I put my marks? So mine's that way around. Match up the woven side panel with the long edge. Clip it in place. While I'm pinning here, here I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to pin the other edge as well. And then we're going to sew along those two edges, stopping again one centimetre from the edge of those woven side panels, from the end of the notch as well. This time, because we've got the woven pieces there on the inside, because we're sewing uh, wrong sides, the with the pattern piece one on the side right um, facing up. I'll get there in a second. Um, you're going to want to just check with your fingers still as you go that you're not catching that in. You can also peek through, push it out of the way so that it's not in place when you're sewing. You can reach up from the bottom as well. Pull those strips out of the way. 
So I'm reaching through, you can see my finger there. I'm reaching through and just pulling those strips out of the way as I go, continuing on. And finally do the other side. This is one of those things, it's not, it's, I'm probably making it look hard. It's not hard, it's just fiddly and you've just got to get your fingers in there and make sure that you're not sewing over the wrong bits. That's all. And we're going to box the bottoms again. So we're going to place the two pattern piece ones right sides together fold that side out of the way a little bit. Same as we did before. And we're going to sew all the way along that bottom edge this time without a turning hole. Okay, once again, we're going to cut into where we stopped stitching by a few millimetres, half a centimetre. And I'm cutting again into pattern piece one. Try and do it so you can see it. And I'm gonna pull that apart, match up that bottom edge, open up that seam, and we're going to clip and stitch one centimetre from the edge. Making sure, again, that we're pushing those straps out of the way. I'm going to flip it over, do the same on the other corner. Okay, then we're going to sew one centimetre from the edge on those two seams. We're going to start where that line of stitching we did before starts or ends. Stitch in, put the needle in, feel for those straps. Okay, so we've sewn up, oh, throw the scissors on the floor. <laughs> uh, we've sewn up those two box corners and then we're going to move on to putting in the straps. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do I'm going to turn it the right way out just because it's a bit easier for you guys to see. You don't have to turn it the right way. So we've got our woven sides, okay? We've got our straps. What we want to do is we want to push the straps. You're going to find that top layer of the weave here and we're going to push the strap inside, okay? Underneath, I should say like that and we're going to do the same with the other one okay we don't want to push it all the way down so that it's sticking at the bottom like that you can see that there's a little bit of my lining showing there i could chop that off and make it even however my cast off stitch is within that lining so i'm just going to keep it there it's going to be totally fine um no one's going to see it tuck that in there. I want to make sure that the woven bit is down as far as it can go so that we've still got that seam allowance up here because we want to make sure we've got a centimetre seam allowance at the top. Okay, so push it into the place that it needs to go. Line those up so that they are just shy of that stitch line that we did before. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to stitch along these two sewing lines on each strap piece that we made in the weave, okay? So we're sewing over this line and this line. We are not sewing over this bit. Don't sew over that bit, that needs to be free. And then we're sewing over this one and this one. That's gonna give the illusion that this is connected to this. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna pop that back in it's going to be probably easier to tweak it when I'm at the machine 
and I've changed my needle over to a 100 jeans needle because it's going to be a bit tough to get through those layers okay so you might want to do that as well so I've got my straps in the right place Just put that under the machine a little bit going to do one at a time now in the instructions it does tell you as well what you can do if you prefer is you can lift this out the way and stitch underneath so you're not going over that top which for me is the gray bit you can do it that way if you want I'm not going to because I don't want at any point this to lift up and see that raw edge underneath you're going to have a rivet in there so it's unlikely but I like to encase it so it depends if you mind about going over the stitches or seeing those kind of double layer of stitches it depends on how you feel about that as to which choice you do it's totally personal preference I'm going to keep the thread long to start with and I'm going to put the needle down using a zipper foot as you can see but you can use a walking foot you can go with what you prefer to use. I'm just going to lift that up again actually and make sure that that is pulled over as much as it can be. Make sure that that's nicely in place and not at an angle. Okay so I've done that front one. And of course, as luck would have it, the strap's fallen out. Ah, so I just realised I was about to. Can you see the print on that on the lining is going like this is the top and this is the bottom. And I was about to do my other strap going the opposite way. It's a minor thing, but I want to have it the same. So I'm going to pop that in, get all the hairies out of the way. I'm going to sort the hairies out in a minute. Tuck that in where it needs to be it's almost underneath pull it down and out of the way and I'm going to do that bottom bit first and thinking about it you could do that um, you could do this line of stitching before you put the strap in couldn't you because you're not actually going over that strap off cut the threads and then we're going to do the same on the other side. So we're going to do the same and we're putting the other end of, so the same side of the same strap into the other woven panel. Push that in and the same with the other one. Push that in. And this is all before we've inserted the lining. Can you see There's, the lining is not there at the moment? Okay, you may find that with your leatherette, faux leather, or if you're using cotton, that a microtex is fine. I found that I needed to get a beefier needle. So that's why I've gone up to the jeans needle. Hold the thread again. Like I always say, slow and steady. Pull it out, thread. Okay, and that last line, and then we're gonna whoops, we're gonna cut off all of our hairies, <laughs> all of our threads. Stuff that back in. I'm gonna pull through all those threads. So I've tied off all those little strings, all the threads, and then we are going to come on to putting in the lining. So I've got the lining and we want to have the outer, the main part, we want to have it wrong side out. So I'm going to reach through, turn it the wrong side out. Like this. Okay, and then we want to get the lining and we want to have that one with the, uh, is it that way? No, we want to have it so that the right side is out. And then we're going to place the lining inside the bag so that it's right sides together. Okay, then 
as you may have guessed, you may have done before. We're going to line up all the corners. But before we do that, we want to put the straps inside the bag, okay? So I'm going to pop them inside so they're out of the way. That's really important that they go, they're sandwiched between the outer and the lining. So then when you're going to match up those corners like you would normally, obviously that one can go there and we'll pop a clip in. And then we've got this woven end, haven't we, that we did before. Just make sure that that one, that my uh, basting is right on the edge there. It's kind of come off a bit. So I'm just going to put that into check. You want to pull the strap. So this is the back of my strap. You want to pull those out of the way. We do not want to catch those with our sewing, okay? When we're sewing in the lining. Okay, so we're lining up that one there. Put the clip on. We are not catching the straps. Now make sure we don't catch the straps. Match that one up with there. Pop another clip in as well. Stretch it out so it fits. Okay. Then I'm going to pop over to the other side. Hopefully you can see this okay. It's a bit of a funny angle, isn't it? Matching up the other corner. So that's that corner and that's that corner. Pop a clip in. Again, we're pushing these straps. That's the back of my strap. We're pushing that nicely out of the way. Ooh. Match up the other seam line. Pop a clip in. Pull that up a little bit. So we've got a bit of seam allowance there. Clip in. Okay, so I've got those two corners. I've got all well, the two ends where the woven pieces are. I've got that one clipped and I've got that one clipped. Then, of course, we're just going to clip the rest of it together. Ah, now if you want to put in a magnetic snap we need to do that and I am actually going to do that so we need to do that right this second before we sew any more so what we're going to do I'm just going to pop that clip out because it was about to fly off anyway we're going to find the middle of the lining so by all means you could do this before you start clipping it around let's find a friction pen like a mark in the middle of the lining you don't have to do a magnetic snap. I didn't do it on my first one. Um, and it's absolutely fine because it's just a big open bag and chuck everything in. This one I am going to do it. So I've made a mark there and there. And I'm going to mark down. Like I say, this is probably going to be a lot easier to do if you do this um, before you put the lining in. So we're going to measure down three and a half centimetres from that mark. Hopefully you can see that okay. And then I want to pop in my magnetic snap. Now if you haven't put one of these in before, they're really easy to put in. So you have what I call the male side and then you have the female side. Take off the protective layer. Oh, it wants to stay attached to me. And then what you want to do is you want to lay your prongs or the prongs of the snap over the top and figure out roughly where it's going to be. If you're doing this onto vinyl, obviously on this project, you're not going to be doing that. If you, um, you can sort of make a mark with the prongs and that will tell you where to cut. And actually I can do it on the lining as well. It's done that not too badly. I can see that it's probably a bit difficult for you to see. And then very carefully, my finger is underneath, but I'm being super careful not to cut myself. You want to make two little cuts with your scissors there. 
so that you can put the prongs through. Now the other thing you can do as well, we can get some Decaville. So we can put two little pieces of Decaville behind. I've just cut out some scrap squares. What I like to do is just round the corners so that they, if there is any of that showing through, not that it's going to show through, but you're going to see the shape through. Um, it's just a bit nicer than having a square. So just round those corners. So I'm just pushing that through and I can see where those whole, the prongs want to go. And ideally you would iron this on. I haven't, but at the end I'm going to do that to keep that in place. So I'm placing the fusible side towards the lining. Does that make sense? Then you can place your backing on. Then you can place your backing plate on top and you can push the prongs to the outside like so. Okay, so it's really easy. Again, you can fuse that on. Um, if you are going to fuse that on, be careful you don't get the, if you're going to do it after like me, be careful that you don't get the iron near the magnet because that can stop the magnet, so I'm told. Okay, so I've got that on the one side of the lining and I'm going to do my other side. Okay, so that's secure on there. Then I can continue where I left off and clip that around the edge. Okay, so that's all clipped round. I've got my magnetic snaps in there. Then I'm going to stitch all the way around the top with a one centimeter seam allowance. Now I am going to use a zipper foot when it comes to these two kind of woven side panels, just so that I can get right up close to that strap, but not on top of it. Okay, so again, I'm pushing the straps, that's the bulk of the strap, I'm pushing that out of the way so that I don't catch that. Even if you're shy of the centimetre seam allowance, if you're not hitting that centimetre seam allowance, go with what it's telling you. I'm a bit shy of that centimetre seam allowance on that bit, on this bit, on this uh, side. Okay, so we've done that. We're going to pull out the lining and we're going to berth it. So we're going to reach through, grab that bottom. This is my least favourite bit of <laughs> bag making. I know I'm not alone. Okay, we are nearly there. Right now, what we're going to do is at the top we're going to pinch it so that the lining is just inside and we're going to clip that all the way around the top you can't clip that on the seam on the sides sorry so don't worry about that for the minute i'm just going to clip it all around the top and then we're going to top stitch either side. So we're going to top stitch along this edge and on along this edge, but not on those side panels where we've got the weave and the straps. I have a jumper at the back because this is going into a little bit bulky territory, maybe a couple more stitches. Now we're going to pull through those threads, tie that off, then we're going to move on to doing the rivets. So to do the rivets, you can use a 
press like I've got, or you can use a tool, which often comes with the rivets. You want to push down the lining. So it's really nice and smooth because one of the reasons why we're putting the rivets in is to keep that lining down and out of the way. So it's as if it's been top stitched, but we obviously know that it hasn't. Now I'm going to get my hole punch. I like to use a hand hole punch or you can, if you've got a press, use the, the, the cutters that come with it. And I'm going in the middle of that square. You can mark it or just eyeball it. I'm, I must admit, I'm just eyeballing it. <laughs> and make a hole. Then we're going to get our rivets. I'm using rose gold on the, this one. And we're going to do the same on the other three. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to pull out our lining, find the turning hole, our gap in our lining, we're going to clip or pin that together and you can either hand stitch that with a ladder stitch or you can do that on the machine. I'm going to do it on the machine. I'm just going to put a couple of clips in place and stitch along that line on the machine. And there is our finished tote bag with our woven sides. We've got the rivets in the top there and our magnetic snap really roomy got our pockets in there it's going to hold loads of stuff and just grab it and go great for shopping or when you're out and about i really hope that you've loved that tutorial thanks so much for watching if you have any questions queries or comments do pop them in the comments box below and don't forget to subscribe so you can see lots more videos and tutorials like this one i'll see you on the next video